Hello and welcome to Barbatos Catholic Podcast, the show where three Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. We are your hosts, Gustavo, Ivan, and Walter. And today we are going to talk about Mother's Day. But first, a word from our sponsor. CMF Curo is a Catholic healthcare ministry that provides families nationwide with a better solution centered around the whole health, spirit, mind, and body. CMF Curo partners with one of the nation's leading health sharing ministries so that its members can share their medical burdens in community. At CMF Curo, members also invest in their whole health with access to a spiritual director, concierge services, and health and spiritual resources. Find out if CMF Curo is a better solution for your family. Visit MyCatholicHealthcare.com to learn more about CMF Curo. That's MyCatholicHealthcare.com. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, the same day, same time. Same day, same time. It's like everybody downloads mm -hmm. it at a different time. But, you know, That's true. Same, uh, Only the real ones download it on Taco Tuesdays. On yeah, Taco, Taco Tuesdays. Taco Tuesdays, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only the real uh, ones. If you're listening to this on an actual Tuesday, well, go have some tacos on Good us. for you. And know that you are a real one. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, um, what are we talking about? Today we're talking about um, Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, <laughs> we were talking about um, how Mexicans address their moms, right? There's just a lot of uh, ways. That, like, I was really confused when I was a kid when some of my friends in school would be like, Le voy a preguntar a mi jefa. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask my boss. And I'm uh -huh. like, what? What are you talking about? Like, what are you, you don't work. You're 10. Yeah. It's like, why are you referring to your, your jefa, your, your boss, to your mom that way? It's like, okay, well, that, that's the thing. Do you, call, do you call your mom jefa? No, I don't call her jefa. I call her, I just call her ma. Ma? Mm -hmm. Ma. Hey, that's my thing. Isn't it? it was mommy all the way up to 17. <laughs> 24. <Dude. laughs> Yesterday. I will stop right now. Um, <laughs> well, uh, Ivan is like, no, of course not. No, <laughs> that would be weird. Do you call the girls, uh, mommy? I call them mama. Mama, like mama, come here. Like you know, this is like Oliver was so weirded out when we started calling Lucia. Hey, little mama. He's like, why are you calling her mama? That is mama. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, it's, it's a cariño, way. Dude, my, mom, my mom hates it when we when we call her jefa. And we do this oh, yeah. joke, like, jefa. Como está jefa? She hates it. With a I can see why. Yeah. ¿Qué onda jefa? Are you talking about Jefita. Like, uh, like That's even right? worse. Huh? Jefita. Jefita? No. Yeah. Jefecita? Jefecita. Jefecita. Yeah, that's pretty that's bad. That's like Pepe el Toro. Uh -huh. Uy, jefecita. <laughs> um, but ma... Amma. Amma. Mine is Amma. Amma uh -huh. and Apa. Amma. Where are my shoes? Amma, hey. se acabó el papel del baño. <laughs> I was going to go for that yeah. one. But... Manza mi camisa. Yeah. You know what my mom always says? Pregúntame por mis calzones y te digo que aquí los tengo puestos. Wow. That's what she always says, bro. Every time. One you know, your mom, time. one... One time when we were at one of the multiple dinner parties at your at your folks, um, when she said, <laughs> se, me, se me encuera el chino. <laughs> se me encuera el chino. And I was like, oh, she did not yeah. just say that. It's so <laughs> funny because it's so unexpected. For those of you that don't know what that means, it's a play on words. Yeah. That is very funny. And I don't know how to translate it, so I'm not going to waste Well, when you get goosebumps, we say, se menchina el cuero, like, that's what you say. Yeah, but, but when you reverse it in Spanish, it's much funnier. Mm -hmm. Se menchina el cuero. Se menchina el chino. Se menchina el chino. See, I got it backwards that time, yeah. for real. Or like, uh, se atormenta una vecina. Se, uh -huh. <laughs> Instead of, se, se vecina una tormenta. Yeah. That's more like a dad joke. Yeah. But, um, so... Um, 
Okay, let's let's uh, let's go around the table and say uh, what's the best um, the best dish that your mom makes. Like, what's your mom's staple, or like, if you're putting your mom in a competition, a cooking competition, what would she make to win the the cooking show? Oh my goodness! How long is this episode again? Oh, you know, we're trying to keep it under an hour. Just one. It's hard though. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, it's, your well, mom is in chopped. And it's like the lightning challenge. Oh, that's, I don't even know the, the yeah the concept. Of, <laughs> just know that I'm just throwing things like um. And there's so many. I mean, I mean, I can start. So for my mom would be asado de puerco, which in other why are you shaking your head? I was gonna say the same thing. Are you kidding me? No, Not de puerco, viste. but but of uh, chile colorado. The rest, no, it's different. Then it's a different asado. Well, go ahead. Different things. So yeah, like, go ahead. It's it's a uh, cubed pork, uh -huh. fried in its own lard because obviously you need that, and it has like bay leaves and um, this sauce made out of like chile guajillo and okay, it's totally uh, different then, but it's the same name. It's weird. Asado de porco. Well, uh, asado. Like very, uh -huh. And again, if you listen to the show, <laughs> you have like me, who is from the northeast part of Mexico, and then Gustavo from the northwest part of Mexico and Ivan who's from Zacatecas in the center. So we're gonna have the same name for the same thing and it's totally different. Totally is it different. like a sweet dish? No. No, no. the pork oh, okay. was savory. Because we have something called asado de boda. It's the same uh, this is also served at weddings. Mm -hmm. Asado de rancho. Oh, okay, uh, but the asado de boda, it's not like sweet, sweet, but it it's it has a I think they put it's almost like our own version of mole. In a way. Really? Mm. No, it's so good. It's like a staple dish. In, oh, like, this has to be like and... spicy and savory. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's really good with rice and beans. Tortilla okay. recién hecha. Mocate la boca. <laughs> Anyways, my mom is really good at that. And, um, you know, every time that she visits, I'm like, oh, can you make some borco, please? Mm. <laughs> and so, yeah. My mom is chile rellenos. Oh, dude. That's oh, probably... Yeah. Hang on. What does she put inside the chile relleno? Um, chile. I'm not, sorry, chile. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. We've established um, that with the name. Le pone kind of queso. Queso? Mm -hmm. This is Monterrey. It, you can have different fillings. So, mm -hmm. picadillo, like ground beef with potatoes mm -hmm. inside. I've heard of that. And, uh, and cheese. It's like mm -hmm. the two that you can get like at a restaurant or something. Okay. Que, que chile usa? Is usa chile poblano o el o el o el güero. No, no, no el güero no. No, usa chile poblano o usa chile también. verde. Ajá, uh -huh, o uh -huh. chiles jalapeños también. Chile jalapeño really? Yeah, yeah. like the, the smaller ones. No. They're spicy, bro, but they're so good. No, my, my mom is uh chile verde. She's always made them with chile verde. Wait, is it chile different? poblano the same thing as the Anaheim? <coughs> Probably. No. No, chile poblano is the the darker green one. Okay, well, she does use those, but uh -huh. then sometimes she'll use the Anaheim ones as well. Yeah, it depends. the Anaheim. Like, she's always kind of changing it up, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter what she uses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, they're always so good. You, you've oh, I've them. had them. Yeah. 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 Ash Wednesday. So that's my, so whenever it's one of our birthdays, she always makes mm. chile. Oh, well, that's what we always ask for. It's, chile, mm -hmm. you know, so. it's mm -hmm. so labor intensive. So my mom and my dad used to have a, like a little cafe. Um After they used to have like a like a shop where they sell like Mexican rugs and Mexican artifacts and things like this, uh, but when the Twin Towers went down, so did the tourism in Nogales, which is the lifeblood of that town. So since they away. owned, huh? It went away. Yeah, because people weren't crossing as much. Yeah. So they kind of like since they owned the the place for years and years, um, they decided to do something with it because there weren't doing anything and they transformed it into a little like cafe with my mom's cooking and chile rellenos she would make them once a week because mm -hmm. they're labor intensive but she would make like 80 of these things yeah and they would like fly like off, pancakes like, like pink like it would be noon and no more chile rellenos and then people would have to wait like to the other week oh the, the other week yeah dude yeah they're so good Yeah, there's, it's like when when you get one that is really spicy, it's like you want to cry, but you keep eating. Yeah. I don't know. Because it's so good. Yeah, but it's, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for my mom is like mm. my favorite dish that my mom makes is uh, asado. 
the same name, but, but it's, it? it's, um, it's, um, beef, um, like, uh, slow cooked beef. Uh-huh. And then she cuts it like in big chunks too. Uh-huh. Um, it's weird because it's the simplest thing, but the, the, the secret in that thing is the sauce that she puts on top of it that she makes with the same, uh, stew with the same like broth of the, of the beef. Yeah. Um, and then with the, in the broth, she puts like chiles and cebolla and like a bunch of other things that make it really, really savory, but it's still super liquidy. So, so it has the fat, it has the, the taste of the beef. And then she cuts like, um, potatoes, more or less the same thickness of the beef. Uh, and then she fries it with salt and pepper. And then you put like a plate of just beef and potatoes, a tower of lettuce, a bunch of tomato, a bunch of queso fresco, and then you smother it with that caldo at the at the end. Oh my goodness, dude. With like shredded iceberg lettuce on top of the uh-huh. meat. See, that's weird. Oh, it's so good. I don't dude, know. That sounds so good. <laughs> It's so good. And then she makes her own salsa, right? Like with on top of that. On top of that. Like fresh salsa. Not not like the like the bandera. Not like the fresh salsa, but it's like yeah. your roasted tomatoes and stuff. Oh my goodness. I'm like salivating right now. Do you realize that we always end up talking about food in this podcast? Yeah, I think it's Nothing it's a staple of the we Mexican have, culture. I mean, to. our yeah, food is dude. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying is like this is like the only culture part about this podcast is like Mexican <laughs> gastronomy. <laughs> Probably talk about movies or something else. Anyway, yeah. note to self. Hey, guys, if you're listening and you're like, hey, I want to know more about this thing that is Mexican, like Frida Kahlo or something, hit us up. We'll make an episode about it. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. We're open. Um, but um, anyways, getting into the topic. So... Fathers are very important to every family, and and you know we're gonna do a, a Father's Day episode on that. But today, we're gonna talk about the real heroes of every family, which is mom, right? Um, it, it, I think I can speak like in my own personal experience, like from my mom's side of the family, it was a complete matriarchy, like my grandma. Kuka, um, she ran the whole operation, right? My grandma has 10 children, something like that. Yeah. So my mom is one of 10. And um, so growing up, every Sunday we would go to, uh, to my grandma's house to have lunch with all of our, it's like imagine 10 families in one single house it was like mayhem right mm-hmm. like people would like eat in batches and just hang out and it was like a whole day ordeal like people were coming and going did you guys get numbers not numbers no. but like you know you're there's always the family that arrives yeah. super late that is yeah. like actually dinner you know instead yeah. of like lunch yeah and um but then i didn't know that other families didn't do that like i thought that that was like a thing that everybody goes eat at their grandparents' house every Sunday, but you know that was like the 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 side of my uh, my mom's family, um, and all of that. It's in part for you know my my grandma and then um, you know my mom and my aunts and and all of them. I guess like because women are like more uh, geared towards relationships that we had that and. I think that that like shaped a lot of um, who I am now as a man uh, because I was exposed to all of those uh, types of relationships that, you know, and I think I mentioned in, in, in previous episodes that my grandma was the one that would pray the rosary with all the neighbors in the block mm-hmm. um, and, and organize all of those like the posadas and all that kind of stuff. So, um, did you guys have a similar experience with like, um, moms being like the heads of the families to some extent? None. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Not necessarily. I mean, in terms of like social things. Yeah. The, I think my mom's cooking coming back to the food <laughs> was always kind of like everybody wanted to hang out, you know, at my mom's like 
Christmases and uh, New Year's and things like that, there were usually people coming to our house. We would never go to someone else's house because my mom would always like to host. Um, so your mom's like Monica Geller? Yeah. It's like I'm the host. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but no, in terms of like, it was it was pretty pretty well balanced in terms of the responsibilities. I mean, my mom, for the greater part of her life, was a stay-at-home mom. But in her early, when they first just got married, they both like ran their own business. Not not each. The, the, the family, the family business. business. Like a little like abarrotes, like a small grocery mm -hmm. store. Like a mom and pop mm -hmm. shop. Exactly. It was called mom and pop shop, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> that would have been gold. It's like the mom and pop shop. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they, yeah, my mom did have that, that she pulled people to, to the house. Mm. And I think it also helped that it was like four boys and one girl and with my siblings. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, the, the, my sister, when she, she was the first to get married, her husband would always come and like reconnoiter at our house, you know? Mm-hmm. It was rare that my sister would go over to her in-laws' house, so the party was always at my mom's for some reason. Yeah, that might be the thing. Like with with men, well, maybe not in the Garcia's household. <laughs> um, I think that um, with with my, uh, with my mom, my mom is. She's brilliant. She's she has a master's degree, and she was she was getting her master's when we were like nine, ten years old. So I wow. I knew her working at least. Uh, both my parents are teachers, and and my mom is really ambitious. So she got her master's, and then it, she was just climbing the ladder to the point where she got to be like I think the equivalent would be like a superintendent. Mm -hmm. So. Even though she was very ambitious with her career, she was also very dedicated to to us. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe that's just like Mexican moms that wants to have their kids one up them, you know. So my mom was like, "You need to go to this college because it is the best college in town," and. Um, and that's that was like okay. She pretty much like filled out my my application my application for the for my scholarship and whatnot, and I got it. And it's th the reason why I studied what I studied in in a in a big way was because my mom was like, "You're gonna go to this university." I'm like, "All right," <laughs> you know, didn't know better when I was 18. Um, and and I think that that um, career focus for me comes from the side of my mom is my mom is like a really smart woman, super generous with her time. All of these things um, that in a, in a way, whether I, I was like thinking about uh, the char characteristics of, of my mom that I'm like, as much as I um, sometimes I, uh, I clash with how she is because um, you know, when when mom send you, do you have a uh, WhatsApp group chat with your family? Yeah, but my mom's not in it. Your mom's not in it. Oh well, my mom's in it, so she's trying to always like, ¿Cómo están? Nosotros estamos bien, and you know, you get like a tweety uh, animated mm -hmm. if uh, like for good morning and for good evening, like mom, I'm fine. Just like if I don't, if she, if she doesn't hear from me in like 24 hours, like she gets worried, you know, mm -hmm. but. That's um, how the devout, devout or uh, selfless she is. And she's always like thinking about yeah, reaching other, out other people. Mm -hmm. um, because then I had um, my sister was like, you know, I've been talking to other of my friends and they don't talk to their parents daily. And I'm like, yeah, we have a problem. You know, it's like <laughs> really attached to one of them. Just a good and a bad thing. This is like really like, let mm -hmm. me miss you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, that's just me. Anyways, Ivan, what has been your experience? Actually, with us, it was a little bit different. Um, cause 
So my mom was already an aunt before she was even born. She is. She She's has, that Mexican. Mm-hmm. She has 10 brothers and sisters. So she comes from a big family. So she already had, like, I think, two or three nephews by the time she was born. So she grew up with some of them. So <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, my mom has been has been like working and cooking since she was like five years old. Um, so growing up for her was just, you know, like just graduate high school. That's all I asked for you is, you know, cause you know, she, I mean, they would push us. I mean, for them it was work, like work, work, work. Her mm -hmm. and my dad are probably the hardest workers that I know. But even though they worked a lot, they still had, I mean, we nunca nos faltó nada. Um, we always had clothes on our backs. We had food on the table. Um, and they, they, they still made time for us, but it was always about work. So that work ethic that I have now, it's, be, it's because of them, you know. And I mean, I, I feel like I still have some way to go. But um, yeah, man, like my mom is just, man, she's tough. She's tough. And then people, people like meet her now. And she's like really sweet and really nice and all oh, this and that. And then I tell them, oh, man, my mom was, like, mean when I was growing up. And they're like, no, she wasn't. And I was like, yeah, oh, you don't know her like I do. They're like, no, she's, like, really sweet. I'm like, yeah, she's sweet, but just don't piss her off. Like, I always joke with my friends, like, hey, when when you <laughs> fell and hurt yourself, like, I, we've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah, It was like, did your mom get mad at you or did she console you? And they're like, no, they're like, oh, come here. My mom, my mom would get so mad. Andale. Like, yeah, yeah, me caía. And then, like, ¿qué te dije? Te dije que te iba a caer. Exactly. So like that's like, my mom just shows like tough love like that, yeah. and to this day that's this how she is, is very hard to imagine that, dude. It's it's so funny because she was like that, but now with my with my daughters, mm -hmm. she's like, oh Ben, mija, this and that. Oh, <clears throat> que te están haciendo? Oh, no te dan de comer. Dude, that's the worst. I'm like, stop. <laughs> you need to stop right now. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> yeah. ¿Qué te hace el horrible de tu padre? Uh -huh. Like, come on. <laughs> Vengo de tan lejos. Just kidding. Anyways. Um, the, the, um, let's talk about the, uh, the other mothers that we have in our lives. Um, let's talk about our wives um, as mothers. I, I think that having that experience of, um, at least me personally, to see uh, Deanna um, as like my girlfriend to my fiance, to my wife, to the mother of my children, has been such a beautiful evolution of a person, you know, like a flourishing of, um, did you see someone that you're like, that's going to be the mother of my children to holy crap, how are we swimming in children right now, you know? <laughs> um, because I don't know about you guys, but um, like our experiences with, with labor and, and, and children, like it, it has gotten like, it, it, it's very intense. Like with, with Oliver, with our firstborn, and she was in like 30 hours of active labor. And uh, we were very naive to an extent because, you know, it was like, we're going to do a natural birth and I don't want any drugs. And then she got drugs to make her contractions harder. And she was like almost, you know, in so much pain that I was like to a point where I was like, just give her something like, mm -hmm. I don't know, some whatever. And, you know, we, we or give me it. something or give me something like my, my hand was like she was crushing my I hand. I need a shot right now. Yeah. Uh, which someone smuggled some champagne into our hospital room the, the day after. Um, but the point is that, then you know, with with our second one, it was like um, she labored on her own at home. And then she woke me up and she's like, okay, we need to go. And I'm like, where are we going? It's like to the hospital. It's like the baby's coming. I'm like, but it's 3 a.m. in the morning. It's like, let's go, <laughs> you know, uh, to, uh, you know, with, with, with Lucia, we knew when she was coming and all these things. And it was like, by that time, like 
She's like, okay, give me all the drugs that I can have as soon as I can have legally. Them. Legally, legally, yes. We're talking about. Uh, no, I know, but in 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 the quantity that I can legally have right, right now, right, right, that's right. what I mean. Um, so um, you know, and we're uh, at the time of recording, we're like a week and a half away from uh, our fourth being born. Um, so that transition from, um, you know, Deanna was also uh, working. We made the decision together to be like, okay. She's going to be a, uh, a full-time mom. We're going to be a, a single-income household and making it work. And then from there to we're going to homeschool. I'm like, all right, I'm going to support you 100% and all, all these things. Uh, but you're like, women who decide to be uh, mothers are superhumans, period. Um, you know? Because there's, there's like a, a, a bit from Jim Gaffigan that's like when, when you think about men's contribution to making babies, it's like very, not very involved. You know, the, the mom <laughs> grows the baby with her body and then with her own body feeds the baby after the baby is born. And, you know, we are just standing there terrified the whole time that things are happening. <laughs> I mean, change diapers, maybe, um, you know, if you bottle feed, you, you bottle feed the, the baby and you can help. Um, but like I've been putting the notes here, my boobs do nothing for my child at night. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this, this mom's one, dad's zero. Um, and, and, you know, like as dads, you know, if, if your wife is a stay-at-home mom, we do get a break, quote-unquote, when we go to work. Uh, and then moms are, like, added in the weeds with everybody. So it it is taxing, you know. There's, there are times at the end it's like, I just want an hour that nobody is talking to me or touching me. <laughs> I'm like, I get that. I get that. Um, so. Babe, if you're listening to this, I love you. And I am so proud of you, of the mom that you are and uh, the the children that you have given me. Uh, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> just kidding. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. <laughs> I was just doing it as a joke, but almost. Wow, D, he's not crying. <laughs> wow. This is sweat. It's not <laughs> <laughs> um. Echenle unas flores a sus esposas. A ver. No, I mean, to, um, I know that, you know, I mean, Mother's Day is coming up and, you know, we obviously we think about our mothers because, you know, they raised us into the men that we are. Um, but, you know, when you get married and you start having kids, you know, that that shift of, you know, obviously you still honor your mother, but that shift kind of goes to towards your wife because, Man, like my wife is a badass. Like I cannot do what my wife does. Like simple, plain and simple. Like I cannot do what she does. Um, yeah, like the fact that, I mean, she gets to push a human out. I don't care if you're the toughest guy in the world, dude. Men are wimps. True. When it when it comes to women, dude, like men are just. Dude, we're wimps. I feel like there's a reason why God made women to have babies and and not men. Unless you want to get political and go into down that road, but I don't want to go there. Um, it's because men would just be so so we just complain the whole time, you know. And dude, like my wife is such a badass. Uh, I mean, especially when they're they're newborns, like ye, they get no sleep. Like you said, like my boobs do nothing for this baby. I can't do anything to feed this baby. I can make him a bottle if my wife's not breastfeeding, but it's so hard for me to to take care of this child. And I just feel like, feel like my wife, like yeah, I get a I get a break from my kids, and then you know, but my wife stays with them. She then she cleans. She has to do she does laundry. She doesn't have to do laundry, but she does laundry out of her, you know, because she wants to take care of our family. And I'm like man, just why is there Superhuman, man. They are mm -hmm. superhuman. They're, it's it's amazing. 
yeah, those graces definitely shine through. Um, I'm I'm the same. I mean, because we were, we also made the decision early on to homeschool. Um, and I've gotten a pretty good glimpse into what her day to day is now that I've been working from home due to the pandemic. And yeah, I mean, nothing but respect and awe for all that they carry, all that she carries. Um, and the goodness in her heart, you know, I, I mean, I'm at home like five minutes after work and I'm already yelling at somebody, you know? Yeah, I do that too. <laughs> so, so that, that tells you how much patience, patience I have. Yeah. And, um, and the fact that that's their, that's what they do, you know, day in, You know in, what day I do out. appreciate and maybe Carolina and Diana do this as well is that, yeah, if I get home and I'm only there five, 10 minutes, and I'm already getting mad at Lily and Nayeli like calls me out. Like you've been here five minutes. You need to relax. And I'm like, you're right. Like, I have no, yeah. Like I have no right mm-hmm. to be getting impatient or angry so the fact that she gets to call me out on that, like, I appreciate that, you know? Yeah. Deanna's way more subtle. She's like, um, do you want to do something else? I'm like, <laughs> <clears throat> yes. I'll be right back. I'm going to take out the trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any other words. Both from my mom's perspective, um, you know, she raised five kids. She worked pretty much through the first three, um, full time. Then supporting my dad through it through another business. They've always had their own businesses, and same same as you, Walt. Uh, uh, Ivan, my mom has been a cook since she was like seven year old. She seven, seven years old. Um. She took care of her siblings. She's the oldest from her siblings. I mean, the what she kind of like went through at a very young age, raising siblings, because my grandma was off working. Um, it's incredible. I mean, my mom knew how to make tortillas uh, at 12. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, a lot of women that's don't insane, have that dude. skill. You know, yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy to me. And, and, and she's always had that, that um, aspect of, wanting family she's never Mm. even to this day she just craves family so this pandemic has been pretty tough on her um and yeah i mean my wife i mean i can't i can say i can't it would be another full episode i guess dedicated to each of our wives because the 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 amount of love and and education not just like actual education, but like life education. Um, the fact that they're shaping humans after having birth humans, you know, it's, yeah. it's really mm. awe inspiring. Not just building their body, but yeah, like, their <laughs> intellect, their, their soul, you know, she's, she's in charge of people's souls and lives and, and on a daily basis, not that we're not, you know, I think it's a, it's a balance for, it's uh, it's a balance of 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 mom and dad for for us. You know, I'm talking about us three here that we're all blessed to have our spouses. Um, it's it, that that's the complementarity. Um, we each bring something to the table. And one of the things that uh, I have discussed with Diana before is I don't remember where she read this, but she was telling me about how. Um, women in a special uh, way um, are co-creators with with God. I mean, both the mother and the father are, but in an even more special way with mothers because of that receptivity to life from God. Um, And then, um, you know, it is a soul that is with them for uh, 40, 40 weeks. Um, until the and that attachment, you know, that that's why we always, uh, well, not always. That most people say like cut the cord, right? Because there's mm-hmm. a, like a, there's a very special link between, um, you know, your mother 
And uh, I just wanted to clarify something that we're, you know, we, in our very particular um, situations, we just so happen that all all of our wives, um, not each one of us have one, not all of our wives, plural, like Gustavo's <laughs> wife, Ivan's wife, my wife, they are like stay at home. We're not mothers. Mormons. We're not Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but to the point that I was trying to make before I made the microphone go like super high with my laughter is that um, for all of those working mothers out there that are listening, or if you, if you are a um, a man who, whose wife um, works and, and is trying to uh, aspire to have a uh, both things, a career, being a mother, that doesn't make it any less, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, Absolutely doesn't diminish from from the effort if anything it it my hat is off to those moms who uh, are both um uh, into their careers and and being a mother uh, i mean look at amy coney barrett right 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 they can be very successful and still have a balance correct um, and and nurture all of those mm -hmm. uh lives that they're responsible for Correct. And that clarification is very, very accurate and valid because, I mean, we're kind of like talking amongst ourselves in terms of our experience with right. our moms and our wives as as mothers in our kind of like little bubble. But, right. Yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. specifically why I was exactly. telling, telling it as it is because, you know, it's like my mom is like very, very ambitious lady. Like she started to learn English on during her 60s you know she's she's, mm -hmm. she's still learning so uh, uh but transitioning into um spiritual motherhood um we have a perfect example in in our blessed mother in mary um and you know it, she's the theotokos the the mother of god who was uh, born without sin she's the immaculate conception like If if you think about what better vessel to to carry God can find in, in any other, you know, with her fiat and you know just saying yes completely to um, the will of God, um, that is like e even if you have the best mom uh, or earthly mom I, i should say everybody that calls themselves catholic we we have in mary our uh, a mother as well not not to say another mother it was another mother but you know she's the mother of us all as well by adoption so also remember that this mother's day um, honor your mother uh And and you know I, I we we can also do a whole episode on Mary right and, and um how much she has um uh, influenced Catholicism in with all the apparitions and 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 all this influence that that she has had in in all of Christendom so you want to expand. Um, I, I got something. Did you ever like, like one of the examples that comes to mind is um, because we go to Jesus through Mary, yeah. you know, we, we try to, with the consecration, um, we, we pray the rosary. We're venerating Mary in terms of like, lead us to your son so we can love him perfectly. Like you love them perfectly. Um, so, It's kind of like a, a a good example of, did you ever ask your dad for something? He's like, Papa, ¿puedo ir al baile? Pregúntale a tu mamá. Dude, you know? that ping pong. Yeah. That's yeah. like a... <laughs> or, or, you know, I see it with my children now that I come in from from my office into the house and uh, Emilio is like, can I watch a movie? And I was like, what did your mom say? Mm -hmm. And it's like, Uh, I was like, she probably said no, did she? And it's like, ah, uh, and I already yeah. know that um, they're trying me yeah. because mom said no. Yeah, so exactly. It, and and yeah, like sometimes it's um, 
you know, the, uh, as fathers, you can, you do like the uh, authoritarian and the mom is like mm-hmm. the one that does the, like the apapacho, you know, mm-hmm. the, the warm, warm and fuzzy yeah. uh, refuge for children. The mantle of our lady. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Um, Gustavo, what was that um, trailer that you sent us? The the priest that was um, the movie that that's coming out. Oh, Father Peyton. Father Peyton. Patrick Peyton. The family that prays together stays, stays together. together. Yeah. I think that um, this Mother's Day. Yes, honor your 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 mother. Honor your wife if you're married, um, but also. Go to Mary, pray the rosary. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of graces to be had there if um, if you pray the rosary daily um, to to go through Jesus, um, to Jesus, through Mary. Um, it We're just going to tie it tie it in there with mm-hmm. uh, being... Uh, we, we used to play the Mañanitas for Our Lady when we were in youth group. Mm-hmm. In on Mother's Day? Uh-huh. Because we would uh, take a serenata. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. all the moms of youth group. Wait, how do you teens. say serenata in English? Serenade. 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 Mm-hmm. And we would uh, go and sing a couple of songs to each uh, around midnight. Mm-hmm. And it took a while, man, because to go to like nineteen, twenty different houses in one night takes a while. So we would pile everybody into a pickup truck, a couple of guitars, and I was part of the choir. And we would go around, and then the last house that we hit was El Santuario de Nuestra Señora Guadalupe in Nogales. Mm. And right out there, man, with the gate closed and everything, <laughs> we would just like sing a couple of songs for Our Lady out there. It was awesome. I have so many fond memories of doing that year over year. It was great. Dude, serenades. Yeah. Is that legal here? Can you do that? They're going to call the cops on you probably for disturbing the so. peace. I mean, depending on what you're singing. That's and how true. late it is. And how good your voice is. And how good your voice is, yeah, yes. We, we all need to serenade our wives. Yeah. Although my wife would really appreciate a extra hour of sleep instead. I know. I'll probably serenade her with some silence. <laughs> Can you serenade me when I'm awake? Exactly. I bought you a spa. I'm taking the kids somewhere. Yeah. You have five hours. There we go. Hey. hey. That's better Dude, than I want to do that. I told Nayeli, I'm like, what if I get you like a hotel room? You can spend the night. But she's like, no, but I like to wake up on Mother's Day with you and the girls. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. But I'm like, let me do something for you. Well, do, like do, a spa do, day. Yeah. Do, any, do it any other day. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Because, mm-hmm. hey, Mother's Day doesn't just have to be on Mother's Day. Exactly. It should be. We should celebrate day. them every yeah. day. Yeah. Because yeah. they deserve it. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you for listening to this episode of Barbatos Catholic Podcast, the show where three Mexican dads talk about faith, life, and culture. If you like the show, please consider subscribing to the podcast, sharing it on social media, leaving a rate and review on Apple Podcasts, and recommending it to your friends and family. And if you didn't like it, well, just keep it to yourself and let others make their own mistakes. You can follow us on Instagram at Barbatos Catholic Podcast. Send us an email at hello at barbatoscatholicpodcast.com. On the web, we are at www.barbatoscatholicpodcast.com, where you'll find the show notes for this episode and more. Um, and remember, uh, honor your mother, go to Mary, get them a spa day, a massage, flowers, chocolate, an hour to themselves so they can hear their own thoughts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Felicity Solanus Casey. Pray, pray, for, pray us. for us. Until the next time. <laughs>